You're listening to Interverse. This is a bonus episode because I didn't actually get my scheduled guest up for this week on the air, although that's been rescheduled. And there'll be lots of fun, really interesting, super uplifting guests coming up. I've uh, been rectifying my lack of effort in reaching out to schedule interviews with people who inspire me. So there will be lots to look forward to in the near future. I'm pretty excited to share with you guys the conversations that I have yet to even have, but that I know will be wonderful. But anyway, this conversation was all kinds of wonderful because I was speaking to my life partner and wife in crime, partner in crime, partner in sometimes partner in podcasting, Haley, who is one of my favorite people to talk to. I mean, definitely the person I talk to more than anybody else. And we have these walks all the time where we go deep into some crazy shit or another and it's fun and i've always wanted to take a mic out there and catch what we're talking about so i actually finally did it this time and i really appreciate her uh appreciate her being such a supportive partner through the weird journey and development that being a podcaster must be for anybody that is connected to a a weirdo like myself so anyway thanks Haley. this is fun if you guys like this conversation and you think we should do more walk and talk combos? I have a feeling I think that we will. Uh, you should let me know though, because then we'll be extra motivated to take some mics out there the next time that we go on a walk and talk about mind control or the meaning of life or how to be a good person or whatever kind of stuff we talk about. I don't know. We talk about our cats way too much, so it's a kind of a good thing to take the microphones because it keeps us from just talking about our cats. It, that's not a very productive conversation and we just say the same things every day it's kind of like a weird form of cat mind control but they're cute so what can you do okay anyway you guys are my favorite people other than my wife of course for listening to this show actually hell I love you all the same she's probably not going to hear me say that she didn't notice unless she listens back to this but why would she she had the combo I don't know I love you guys And make sure you check the episode notes for links to stuff like our Patreon, where you can support us and help us get new gear. Uh, You know, links to all the different social media channels that you might find us on through our website. And also a link to Deep Sequence on SoundCloud, which is the music that you're hearing right now. Uh, The band of Brady Cagle, who is also known as Flintwick, who was on the show a few episodes back. I guess more than a few back, but it was in Season 3. Anyway, go check out Deep Sequence. Go give us a subscribe or a a follow or a like anywhere that you like to do that i'm thinking though my favorite option would be if you subscribed on itunes and left a five-star review but i know that you will so i won't ask anymore until next time that i ask okay time to get on to this walk and talk see y'all next week kind of got to be organic because we're out in nature. Were you trying to like suddenly launch our conversation with that statement? Yeah, and I did. See, you just started, you responded. No. It doesn't matter how you respond. This is me being disappointed. It's not a conversation. This is not podcast material. I'm just disappointed in the level of dad that you 
exhibit? <laughs> well, it's just a natural part of growing and maturing is that I'm becoming more of a dad. And um, I'm not as funny as I think I am. And I've never been that funny. No. But now that I realize it, I can appreciate how funny my not funniness is. And therefore, it kind of balances out. At least I'm entertained. I will never be a mom. <laughs> Throwing it out there. That's okay. Um, no matter how old I get, I will never turn into a mom. No, no disrespect to the moms. Like, I love my mom, but no. Um, that makes sense. There's too much to do to try to raise a spawnling in this world. And besides, there's so many people that aren't raised themselves that, including, including everybody, so that means us. We have to, we're still working on raising ourselves, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I literally have to treat myself like a kid that I'm taking care of and do the right thing for myself in that perspective to actually get myself to do healthy things sometimes. Eventually they become habits, and it's not like that anymore, but I don't know. I, I feel like pretty immature still. I don't know how people have kids at, at any stage in life. <laughs> no. It would make more sense if you had like a community of people to take care of the kid and it wasn't really your one sole responsibility. Um, I don't really understand the drive to have children. <laughs> I know a lot of people say that it is an evolutionary trait that makes you want to reproduce, you know, so that you can evolve and grow as a species and continue. But um, I'm not sure why. That is, and it's really weird to me. I know why it is. Well, I think I know. Okay, go ahead. Well, I think that it's a byproduct of materialistic culture. Because if all that matters to you is matter, then of course all that could possibly matter about your life would be the perpetuation of your own matter projecting into the future. So, if you look at life as actually being both spiritual and material development or evolution, not one being superior to the other, of course, then I still, I think that they're not wrong that it's important to project your biological material into the future to perpetuate yourself, I guess. But really, it's at least equally important to be focused on your own spiritual development and growth and that of those around you because if that's completely left off the table then having all those kids is not going to go well it's going to be really ugly because people aren't going to be raised like we're talking about yeah <laughs> yeah so uh that's painting i don't know tell me about your life right now I'm not trying to be like an interview. I just want to talk to you, but... It sounds like an interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's weird because if I wasn't holding this mic up, we would talk like crazy. I know. <laughs> but you're using your podcaster voice. I know. Isn't it weird? I have a different voice for it. It's annoying. Yeah. I wish I could just talk more naturally on it. I think that'll develop over time. It's mostly that I'm just trying to project my voice more to reach the mic. And well, at least I think that's what it is. Or maybe I look I'm away like trying from the mic to breathe in. <laughs> you know what that's from, right? No. Chocolate rain. Some stay dry while others feel the pain. Chocolate rain. I don't know what that is. So. Oh my god. Taze on day. Chocolate rain. It is. Yeah, it's great. Explain. What, what is it? Do you it? know what chocolate rain is? No, it's chocolate not. Chocolate rain is diarrhea. Okay, cool. I was going to guess. Like, it had to be some sort of squirts-related Hershey's chocolate if it's raining. And it, <laughs> I don't know. Where, where does this come from? This is a viral YouTube video, and Taizan Day is this little guy with a really deep voice, and he sings this crazy song. It's pretty wonderful. He just went viral because it, everyone loved him, and he continued to make songs after that for a long time. I mean, it was pretty famous as far as YouTubers, like, in the, um, earlier, not like early 2000s, but earlier 2000s, I guess. Yeah, that was like a magical time where people a could... better YouTube. 
seriously though, people could, well, it wasn't owned by Google yet, mm -hmm. so there's that. It wasn't, I mean, it was still a centralized platform and that's what led to its downfall because it's all stored somewhere, physical. And that means someone can own it. And then whoever owns it can change how things work and change how data is accessible. Because I, I really don't see those type of people blowing up on YouTube the way that it used to happen. Because now people have, lots of people have large YouTube followings, but it's almost like people are contained to their subcultures in a weird way. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. There's like weird little um, <clears throat> cubby holes of YouTube where like people are kind of confined within that. Like, someone might be a YouTuber who talks about animals, and then someone might be, like, a beauty YouTuber, some might be a gamer, some, you know, they kind of stay within their genre, typically. It seems like most of the collabs lie there that I've watched, but I don't know, I could be off base. It's just, uh... I don't know if that's where you were going with what you said. No, no, that's what I see happening with it, too. Because I watch a lot of, like, vegan YouTubers, right? And they are totally... They pretty much stay within that realm of vegan YouTubers as far as what I see with collabs and who they tell you to watch, you know? Because that's their... That's their content. Yeah, and it's cool that there are communities like that that exist with YouTube. It's just, uh... It's just not a very good platform for one person to reach a, every group well, anymore censored. like that's it used to be. That's the biggest problem. Well, yeah, I wasn't even going there, but it, that's well, completely that's true. The biggest problem out of YouTube, out of Facebook, <laughs> out of Google itself. I mean, you really think your search results are all that's out there? Probably, maybe on some topics, but I'm sure there are algorithms in place that keep certain types of information from being very high on the list. I say that because I googled today I was asked at work to set up flu shot vaccines a clinic to come and give shots to employees. Ooh. Yeah and I've been asked to do this every year and every year I've just followed orders without questioning. I never took the shot of course because I was like why do I want to be shot with the flu? That doesn't make sense. If I don't have it and I keep my immune system up, I won't get it. Right. I don't need to be shy with the flu to not get it. That's actually how you get it. That's how... I, mean, I think it's probably it's how... It's a guess on the strain. You can it's still a guess. It. It's yeah. A, you know, there's a lot of debate on whether you should get it or not. And the debate that I have is that you shouldn't. Well, I go well to back to around to Google, I Googled that today. What's going on with the flu shot? That's not the search terms I use. I googled several phrases and tried and tried to find some sort of information that conflicted the standard line of it's your moral duty as a citizen of the United States in the workforce to get a flu shot. That's basically the only information I could get. Some information about, oh, this is the strain combo this year. It's a quadrivalent flu shot. That means there's four types of flu in there to fuck you up. Uh, well, flu from China, you know, flu from South America. It's a weakened strain, and um, I have had flu shots before, and some years I didn't get sick, and some years I did. Was it with the strain that I was vaccinated with? It may not have been, but either way, I still got sick, like with the flu, for sure. For sure. I went to the doctor, and they were like, yo, yep, you've got the flu. I know you have the shot, but... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hmm, so it's it ineffective. Was I was. I remember, okay, one random flashback, because it was traumatic... This is probably the most sick I've ever been. I was in Walgreens getting um, some sort of something to help my stomach at the pharmacy, you know, which I look back and wish I hadn't done that, but whatever. I was laying in one of the bench seats, just dying, waiting for my <laughs> prescription because I couldn't stand there. I was just too sick. It was pretty sad. Obviously, I recovered quite well, but... Well, so my main question when I was Googling about the flu shot uh, was, what else is in the flu shot? What is actually in it? And the only thing I could get was what strains were in it this year. And I thought that was very suspicious. I paged through several pages, and not only could I not find that information, I also couldn't find any conflicting information from, well, like I said, from that standard line of you should get it. So I personally know several people that are constantly talking about 
don't get vaccines of any kind ever, period. And they've done a lot more research than me, and they seem pretty convicted about it. And then when I Google about that very question, nothing of the sort is out there in the search results. So Yeah, all I can find is stuff about how crazy anti-vaxxers are. And, um, I mean, just so you know, I... I wasn't even getting that in the search results. I've gotten all my vaccines, unfortunately. I haven't really had a choice because I just did it all through childhood. But, um, Same, of course. Yeah, so I've had all my vaccinations, so I haven't really had to worry about it much about myself, um, other than not getting a flu shot every year. But when I've looked it up, I can just find a lot of stuff about how crazy anti-vaxxers are, but I can't find a ton of um, reasons or... I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just haven't dug hard enough. But I can point you to great information on it. Richard Sachs, Lost Arts Radio, Richard, who uh-huh. we talked to. He's done many episodes with people that are researchers on this topic that are definitely not out of their minds in any capacity. Um, One that I listened to, actually, a woman had a daughter that got so fucked up from her vaccines when she was a little kid that it, like, I think it's like one of those classic she became autistic spontaneously things. And um, she was so brainwashed by the culture at that time, it took her several years to even figure out that their doctors had done anything wrong let alone that it had anything to do with vaccines it was crazy well get this the hpv vaccine um that is so popular is it only protects against a few strains of hpv and there's like definitely over a hundred strains so that's so one thing people are probably getting all, hpv from that People, um, well, over like 40, I've read different numbers, but I've read that like 40% of the population has it at some point, but a lot of people's bodies just get rid of it naturally, and then, you know, some don't. But um, either way, I've heard that this can cause seizures, and there are videos on YouTube of people who are warning against getting your child this vaccine, and then they show a video of their kid who's like trembling and convulsing and having these issues they're like yep so this is what it caused don't do it no there's all kinds of videos like that and on the um, subject of HPV actually or even flu and everything of that nature I'm sure you're probably aware that the cult of science has determined long ago that it's actually proximity to livestock and just animal husbandry, the way that it's done in mass that actually causes a lot of these diseases to brew up. Oh gosh, that's just repulsive. Did you know that? No. That's I actually because that. yeah, because uh, I guess like in the fossil record or something, there's no evidence of any kinds of disease of this nature amongst hunter-gatherer peoples, or even I think people who are purely strictly agricultural based may have still faced this kind of problem because I can't really name any agricultural civilizations that didn't incorporate animal husbandry in some way. Uh So who knows? But I'm not saying that would eliminate all diseases if we let all the animals go free instantly. Little snake! Whoa! Little cool black snake on the ground. We should maybe get him off the road. That's cool. He's a little baby. Should put him on a stick and get him off the road? Okay, I'm going to pause this for a second, and we're going to... Right. Um, I'll pause this, and we'll rescue the snake. Be right back. There he goes. Oh, wait. Okay, he's actually... He's doing it on his own. Yeah, you got it, buddy. Get off the road. So we rescued the snake, which felt like a positive... Uh, a real positive experience because last time I encountered a snake on the path I ran over it with my bike and it was kind of horrible yeah he did survive it seemed I even called an emergency vet but nobody would see him and he slithered off into the woods so fingers crossed that he was okay um yeah that was not fun that was not good poor snake I know poor snake they get such a bad reputation because of the whole um, dragon connotation, I guess. I don't know. And then there's the whole ancient bloodlines that are supposedly reptilian, according to David Icke. That's some really interesting information. But it's also really hard for anybody to just, like, actually get into without going and checking out 
uh, the way he puts it. However, I guess where I'm going with that is we live in a world where things that are good are associated with bad and things that are bad are associated with good all the time and I'm kind of sick of it. I'm ready to fix stuff like that. Uh-huh. Stuff in the language. Yeah, I was thinking about those uh, connotations earlier today and how it really affects the way that people hear things. Um. Well, and also, words... Man, if people just understood that words were actually magic and that the language is actually... I think the language is designed as a tool of enslaving us because by the dark forces that exist in in consciousness and I know people hate when someone that's uh, supposedly like a positive person talks about the dark side (laughs) but the fact is there are low vibrational entities that seek to create fear and discord and control in the world there are people in the world who will rob you there are people in the world who will kill anybody and there are people in the world who want power, so that indicates that unless you are willing to completely turn your eye away from that, eyes, plural, away from that, then there there is that side, you know? Yeah, it's something I'm coming to realize more and more is that although there's a lot of positive information coming out of the collective mass of huge data called the new age movement there is clearly a lot of deception because there's so many people that are like trying to be gurus or like i'm the special one and here's my special story mm-hmm. and when i connect that to what i have learned about mk ultra and the trauma-based mind control it makes me think that maybe some of these people who are claimed abductees We're never abducted by aliens, but they're actually being implanted with memories by CIA, trauma-based mind control. And then, since they're under mind control, they can be handed a book and say, here, publish this, you wrote this. And they'll be like, yeah. And they'll just live off of that and create these cult followings around bullshit. Like, bullshit like the Pleiadians are here, right outside the uh, orbit of the planet, ready to decloak as soon as humanity raises their vibration and we get and the Pleiadians get you know command from st- star command you know yeah we're gonna turn around on this walk but my point is like you get all this ridiculous stuff about how it's all gonna get magically fixed and it's no different than people saying Jesus is gonna come back and fix everything there is stuff that's wrong it's like uh, determinism and, you know, libertarianism is obviously believing that you have complete free will, regardless of circumstances, be it external or internal, you have a choice in some way. But then in a determinism mindset, it's more like, you know, there is natural law, but not in the sense that, not in like a... From what I have learned in my class recently, it doesn't seem like it's a karma sense of natural law, but they believe that because of the um, laws of physics that rule our world, we are bound to every choice we, we make because it's not a choice. It's actually just like a chain reaction that's constantly unfolding. And uh, that, puts limita- that puts a limitation on on free will says there's no free will and so that leads to the belief a lot of times that there needs to be control structures and laws in place so that people don't act out um it kind of takes away personal responsibility in a way it totally does that's the whole point that's the whole point of government the libertarianism mindset it's like no even if you're mentally ill even if you know whatever it is you in some way have a choice And there's, you know, those are just two different extremes. That's always the problem is the extremes because really the reality that we find ourselves in is a combination of both of the things that you just described. But the problem with the materialistic view that everything is determined is that they're not taking into account 
it's kind of crazy actually they're they're saying everything in matter <clears throat> in matter in the physical world is governed by immutable unchangeable laws laws of physics laws of the universe but for some reason they don't see morality morality itself which is right versus wrong which is the same thing that they do all the time in science which they try to figure out what's right and what's wrong Mm -hmm. they don't for some reason they think in every other area of science where there's something that's right and something that's wrong law governs that and that's how you can know the difference except morality well (laughs) the words themselves right and wrong mean both correct and incorrect and also right and just just you know so yeah um, but on the libertari- libertarianism, is that what you're saying? Yeah. On that, people who have that viewpoint in the extreme will then say stuff like, there's no such thing as a bad experience. You choose every experience. Um, there's no negative experience. It's all your choice. It's all your creation. That's the full-on extreme of that viewpoint. And that's true up into the point where somebody is actually doing something to you because they have free will too because well, you're not the only one there's that believe in um, random acts of the universe basically to where like it's basically saying like shit happens <laughs> so you have choice in everything but in a sense in your life shit happens and uh you have to just then you have a choice how to react to that but you know you might be put through something that you can't control the the actual event but you can control your response to the event you know and if you come to a level of understanding of the cause of the event then it can't happen to you again that's another big thing and that's what people that's why it's so important that people actually understand um (laughs) Unfortunate as it is, because it's hard to get people to even listen to all the different ways that they're being deceived in language and in our the way our government is structured, and the idea that you need government at all. I mean, government is just religion for the person in a left brain prison. Just the like froggy. there's a frog. I've seen lots of animals on this walk. <laughs> this is uh, it, this is not to say that there isn't a lot of good in the world. I want to clarify that in the grand scheme of things it's the positive experiences that far outweigh the negative far outweigh that's why it's such an illusion to uh be only focused on that it causes it doesn't cause it to come into your life to be focused on what's wrong though because knowing what's wrong does give you the ability to steal yourself against it Mm -hmm. that's another new age deception is that we can't look at the negative and that's me kind of like Mark Passioing out for a little bit because I've been going hard on him today. Uh-huh. I mean, we can change the subject. <laughs> uh, mainly, where where I'm really wanting to study right now is the meaning of words. There's a guy I'm trying to get on the show that wrote a book called Word Magic, and he breaks down all kinds of words in the English language and explains how uh, words are actually not really any different than matter in that their vibrational energy um, is structured vibrational energy that enters physically into the world when you speak them and lots of interesting connotations like like the word world itself is actually the same as the word world phonetically like whirling around Mm -hmm. and obviously the earth spins and uh, the word word itself is actually the same as world. If something whirs, it's uh, no, it's not the same as world, but it's uh, something that vibrates and it makes like a high pitch frequency as it's doing it. That's the definition of whir. Yeah. So, anyway, um, it's just it's <laughs> I'm probably not doing a very good job explaining word magic. There's that snake again. No, it's not him. But I'm just going to want to link this book because uh, I figured out you can get a free month of Amazon Kindle ebooks. You can just download any book they have. So I've been going hard on it every spare 60 seconds I have. 
Yeah, it sounds really good. I will, I would definitely listen to that one. <clears throat> well, it's unfortunately, oh, if I got him on the show. You mean? Cause it's not an audio book. I wish it was. That oh, would be I really you were helpful. Talking about a book just now that you were going to link. Oh yeah, I'm going to, but it's not audio, unfortunately. Oh, okay, I misunderstood that. I misunderstood. Good old-fashioned reading book. Yes. But that's really important to do, too. It's hard to make the time, but in some ways it's not, because we have the ability to have the book in our pocket everywhere we go, and there are a lot of moments where I would normally waste just going like, oh, I got 10 seconds, so I'm going to go look at Instagram, and then I sit and look at Instagram for two minutes or mines. Mines is way more likely than Instagram, actually. But, I mean, I'm I'm going to go check my how many likes I got on something. You know, it's a waste of my time. Yeah. But it's a hard habit to break. It can be easily replaced with um, reading. Really easily. That's kind of the way to defeat OCD is to replace it with good habits. That's what Packy was explaining. He just put out a video today, which is cool. He's back to doing a Pac-Man report. Oh, that's good. He's basically doing a... C Actually, it's really cool what he's doing. Um, <laughs> he has a website now called pureocd.net. And he's going to be sharing information about how to deal with anxiety correctly. As opposed to the standard medical diagnosis of how to deal with it. And I guess I didn't know this about him. But he talks about it in this first video on the series how much OCD totally ruled his life and he had like basically a psych like a a break in his psyche when he was 19 from having a kid it just made him so like anxious about everything intrusive thoughts and whatnot you know pure OCD anyway it took him a long time to even look into how to fix it for himself but you should go listen to his episode he talks about how like creative, positive hobbies and distractions are not distractions in the negative sense of the word. They actually are distractions that retrain your brain to have different habits and thought patterns. If you just like, as soon as you feel the anxiety come on, just like go play your guitar or something. Just train yourself to do that. But um, what's interesting about what he's doing is he claims that there's not really any available information coming from the U.S. right now online about how to deal with anxiety properly, even though, like, in Europe, they've been... they've figured it out, like, treatment the right way a while ago, and there's tons of websites. And around here, you basically have to pay out the ass to, like, go see a therapist or something to have any chance of theoretically dealing with your anxiety. So he's trying to just do this renegade self-therapy thing that will help people who are googling like what OCD symptoms do I have OCD to instead of getting bad information that sends them further in the hole to give them solutions right out the gate right away free yeah. I'm proud of him that's should, really amazing I'll link pure OCD on the show notes <laughs> uh so it's getting pretty dark. It is. Looks like this is about the end of our walk. Thanks for letting me jibber jabber at you. It was easier than doing a solo episode. <laughs> yeah, doing a solo episode would be kind of weird. Just like inner thoughts, you know, spewing into the microphone. But with a person, there's a little bit more to go off of. Weirdly enough, I find myself to be more articulate when there's another person. I have. It's because you're trying to show off. That's got to be it. Yeah, Actually, I want everyone to know that the reason I do everything I do is because I want you to think I'm cool. Yes. It's a complex I can't get over. It's true. <laughs> but, you know, um, you don't have to tell me you th think I'm cool. If you did, it probably would hurt more than it helps. Just tell me everything I do wrong mercilessly in vicious comments uh, about how you hate me. And that would be great. That would really help me train myself to be non-reactive, non-judgmental. <laughs> I haven't got a lot of hate. I'm, I'm waiting for it to happen because that means I've, I've made it big. Anyway, so drop me some hate mail. 
I'll appreciate it. Give them one star on iTunes. Don't do that. That would actually that would actually hurt my feelings. If you just send me hate mail, I would be like, ha ha ha. I love this. I don't know. Unless oh. it's really mean. Probably not. Actually, I'm pretty sensitive. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's why you need so much approval. Be, oh yeah, that's right. That's why I'm even a podcaster. I mean, like I said, it's the whole point. But I also have the intention of Chance. telling people positive information. Chance um, deprecation. What? Chance deprecation. Chance deprecation. I like to deprecate you often. Well, it doesn't happen enough, at least definitely not on the air. Uh, I can't have people thinking I'm actually cool because that would, I don't know. That would make this not authentic, right? Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is no, I'm kidding. Chance is actually really cool, but uh, you have to say that because we're married. You have to, you have to correct that, like you did. Oh yeah, that's true. Or else I would be in trouble. Look, there's three deer. Oh wow! So we've seen uh, three deer, a snake, and a frog. Lots of frogs, actually. I've seen several. Lots of frogs. Wow, those deer. Or Holland. They're running across a soccer field that's by the path we're at. Cool. Hey. Got some bikers passing us here. Yeah, uh, that's fun. I think we'll uh, allow the deer to be our signal to wrap this baby up. Thanks for walking with us. We might do it again if y'all like it. Um, because we go on walks a lot and we have better conversations than this even. Most of the time. So we got to warm up to the whole doing it in front of a microphone thing, obviously. But I had fun. I hope you did too. I'm sorry for using my podcaster voice. I promise you that we've edited out a couple of parts of my awkward speech um, throughout this episode. So um, <laughs> just a disclaimer, but I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, that's just something that happens. It happens to a lot of guests on the show. You're kind of a co-host, not a guest, which means you have all the more right to edit out parts that you don't want. Precisely. So there's really no harm, no foul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I love you guys. Talk to you next week. Bye.